Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and you know, Blender is by far, especially for the money, one of the best 3D modeling and editing tools that's out there. And it's not just 3D modeling, of course, it's, it's animation and it's video editing, it's, it's the whole package. There's no other tool that I know where you can sculpt an object with drawing-like motions, and then edit that object with, with hard shapes to give it a flat bottom and put it on a platform and make it completely 3D printable. There's just, there's just no other tool that I know that can do that. And yet, it gets a bad rap because it's insurmountable learning curve. Well, it's really not that bad. The problem is it has some unintuitive settings. Now, I recently upgraded to Blender 2.77 because I am using it now through Steam, so I'll get automatic updates and I'm super excited about that. However, it means I kind of had to start from scratch on my settings. So I'm going to record the settings that I change in Blender so that you can follow along. Also, Blender changed something that is kind of important to my book. Not, my books are now, unfortunately, out of date in just a very slight way. And hopefully it's something that a future version of Blender will fix. But we'll get to that in just a little bit. First, let's hop into Blender. So in Blender, what you're going to have to do... and, and you're gonna to have to do this once and then update your settings every time unless they change the platform like they did with me going to Steam, uh, is under File, you go to User Preferences. Now, everything in Blender is customizable and that's super cool. That's one of the greatest strengths of Blender. However, it starts with some defaults that are kind of weird and the biggest one, the, the, the only one that really you have to be concerned with is this one right here under the Input tab select with right mouse button no nobody selects with the right mouse button we all select with the left mouse button so if you change that setting you're good when would you want to select with the right mouse button well the one time when you would is if you're using a trackpad and you don't have a 10 key to work with and if you don't have a three button mouse and you don't have a 10 key honestly i say get an external keyboard get a 10 uh, get a three button mouse get an external keyboard with the 10 key on it and your life will be so much better because now you can select with the left mouse button and all of a sudden everything's intuitive just change this one setting and you're laughing go ahead and save those user settings Whew, we're done blender is now considerably more comprehensible and easy to use now if you have multiple objects in the scene let's Let's add some uh, uh, monkeys into the scene. And there we go. There we got some monkeys. You select them with the left mouse button. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Now, let me also talk about something that changed in Blender 2.7 that we're going to need to address if you bought a copy of my book. Because in my book it says all you you know once you take so let's say that we we want to make uh, a you know a three-headed monkey so let's move these three heads to uh, to to this layer and we'll work on them over here okay so I'm gonna move these monkeys to where they're nice and close to each other okay and what I want to do is is for artistic liberties. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to actually uh, add these two together but subtract this one so let's grab my boolean modifier and we'll copy it and we'll do a union on one and a uh, a difference on the other and so we'll union this guy in there and we'll difference this guy in here and now if we if we just I'm, I'm gonna move this to another layer again so we can look at it separately you'll see this guy has well we have a problem with the eyes oh boy we have a problem with the eyes ah nuts I forgot that Suzanne has different parts to her still we can we can go forward with it this is obviously a bad mesh and we do not want to try and 3d printing it but try and 3d printing mm. 
we do not want to try 3D printing it. But I'm going to export it to show you what the problem is. You go File, Export, STL. That's the way I say to do it in the book. That's the way you should do it. You do that and uh, choose a location for it. I'll just I'll just drop it in uh, in my thing folio directory. We'll call it a test. We'll export it and then uh, I'll I'll just open up a new layer and we'll re-import that thing back in just to see what actually import exported. So import an STL. Uh, and what did I call it? I called it test. And look at this. Not only did all three monkey heads go in there, but also the cube that's way back here all alone on layer one. Every single object in the entire scene got exported. In fact, this has overlapping objects because remember over here, the eyeballs didn't didn't come with it. Well, now they're there. Why, why are they there now? Because it's this monkey's eyeballs that we're seeing. The export now exports every model on every layer of every scene. Why? What? What? Huh? <laughs> the reason is, let's go, let's delete this monstrosity. Let's go back to this monstrosity. File, export, STL, they added a new feature in Blender 2.77, and that is that you can select or that you can export a whole batch. And sometimes that's exactly what you want. If you're exporting an object in one format to import it in another 3D model, you want to export everything, the bones and the rigging and everything with it. But you don't want to do that for an STL. A lot of times for an STL, you want to take the final Boolean object because it's a single manifold mesh and that's the only part that you want to export. And so, there's a setting here. It's selection only. You click this setting, selection only. We'll re-export that STL. And now just what you were, what you selected gets exported. So let's re-import that back in so we can check it out. See? Now it works. Now you can force this setting to be always on uh, the, the export uh, selection only. You can make that so that that's always on. However, it involves editing a settings file in text mode in Blender. So I'm really hoping that, that the people who make Blender recognize that this is a significant change in, in not just ability, but functionality and that it needs to be addressed and it needs to be fixed. That should, selection all should be a default setting all the time. I, I recognize the need for batch export and it's really cool, but that selection only should be a default setting all the time for the default. So Blender people, get on that. But there you go. Now that you've changed that one setting in the, the user preferences, Blender is now so much easier to use with just that left mouse select. So go ahead and do that. Go ahead and give Blender a try. Now, now I recognize that Blender is not the solution for everybody. Even with setting it up properly, Blender requires a significant amount of time to, to learn just because it's so vast in what it can do. It's amazing. It's, it's a really hard program. It's not like Tinkercad where you can just drop in and start making something cool from that first second. You, you really have to invest a little bit in doing blender for that reason i can understand that it's not for everybody but if you're willing to invest it you will never need to learn another 3d modeling program because it can literally do everything some things not as well as other programs but no other program can do everything that blender does which for my mind makes it worth the time and the effort and it's definitely worth the money although contributing to the Blender project, if it's that valuable, which it is to me, is, is really, I feel, the right thing to do. But but never mind that. It's, it's great, and it should completely be in your toolbox, in your arsenal of things that you use. All right, so that's it. I hope that if you choose to use Blender, that you'll take a little bit of time, get to know it, change this one setting, and get to realize that it's not as bad as it seems, and, and that you can really enjoy it and have a good time with it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Hey everybody, just, just a uh, frantic video recorded from the editing desk real fast before I sign off on this video because I record these videos in advance. I didn't know when I recorded this video the great outpouring of new 
3D printing scholars who are going to join my Patreon during this week, and I want to thank each one of you personally for, for becoming a 3D print scholar. I want to thank Joel Telling, the 3D printing nerd, for being my first 3D print scholar, Patreon supporter. How awesome are you making me feel with this? And thank you so much. Duplicat, uh, Jeff Golden, Scott Freja, or Freja, and, and correct me uh, so I get it right, because you deserve to get it. I don't deserve your support, but you deserve for me to get your name right, because you're awesome, and, and thank you so much. Uh, Daniel Nori and, and Randall, Randy Gregg. <sighs> Guys, I promise your support is just going to make this channel more awesome. And heaven knows it's got plenty of awesome left to go because where we're at and where awesome is. So thank you guys so much for, for helping me get there. You, you are... <sighs> thank you guys. Be sure to get... The, uh, the decoder ring, I'm leaving those messages for you guys. They're, they're silly messages, but you know, maybe one or two of them will be relevant eventually. Um. <sighs> So the trick to doing a proper knot when tying a tie, and I think this is called a double Windsor. I don't know, I'm not that in that I know the, the names of the knots, but I go around twice. You go around one way, so I just went around that way, and then you go the other way the second time around. And that, uh, that allows the, the knot to hang straight so you don't get that strange thing where, where you got it going like this. See? Eh? <laughs>